standing in the rain with his head hung low. He couldn't get a ticket. It was a sold out show. He heard the roar of the crowd. He could picture the scene. He put his ear to the wall and like a distant scream. Here at Kicker Unmasked Live Weekly on Tuesday night, 7.30 Central Time, coming to you live. How you doing, everyone? So we actually set up a camera over here in the lab and we kicked Wade out this afternoon and said, Wade, we want to commandeer your area because we want to do some interesting tests. And he said, sure. I said, he said, I've got all my work done for the day. You guys can have the lab early. So we took it over from him. So what we've got in here, Hopefully, Tim will get in here. We've got a rack of Astron power supplies. There's six or seven. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven. So there's 350 amps of current on tap. So we have plenty of current and voltage to run this test. And what we've got on this test bench is we have a kicker uh, KXA 2400.1 amplifier. And as far as how it's connected right now, right here on the side of the bench, this is, and if you're not familiar with them, it's called an Anderson connector. And an Anderson connector is a very, very uh, high current connector that you can use to plug and unplug uh, and run huge amounts of current through them. They do it safely and effectively. Uh, so this Anderson connector right here, I think the continuous duty rating on it is either 175 or 200 amps, and then I think peak duty rating on it's over 300 amps of current. And so what it allows uh, Wade to do on a daily basis is he can plug and unplug here whatever gauge wire he needs for whatever amplifier he's putting under test. So if he needs eight gauge or four gauge or one odd, he can change that. But what we created today, we took and did two, we actually have four sets of cables here. There's four sets. And we've got a, strand, a run of kicker one odd. We have a run of kicker four gauge. And then we have a run of CCA one odd. And we have a run of CCA four gauge. And the brand of the CCA, I'm not going to tell you, don't even ask because it doesn't matter. We're not talking brand to brand. We're talking 100% copper wire versus a CCA wire. That's all this comparison is about. And I will never, ever tell you the brand of wire because it doesn't matter. We snake skinned it so you can't even see the brand name because it doesn't matter. We're talking about the technology, not the company or the brand behind it who's selling it. So the first test we've got here we really wanted to come up with a stress test to show you the limitations of copper and the limitations of CCA wire. So what I'm about to show you, understand this is not what we recommend for anyone out there to do. If you buy or have a Kicker KXA 2400.1 amplifier, we 100% suggest you use one watt wire. What we wanted to do here is we wanted to stress the wire so that you could see the differences between copper and the differences between CCA. So what we've got here is from the Anderson connector, it's a 20 foot run of positive and a 20 foot run of negative. So there's 20 feet of each, and that's to simulate the length that you would have in an extreme car in today's world. Sometimes you gotta run across the firewall, down and back across the back, and in those cases you can't get into the 17 to 20 foot run of wire that you need. And in a lot of new cars today, they're not welded anymore, they are glued together. So finding a good solid place for ground can be very difficult. Most anyone you talk to tells you whatever size power wire you're running back, just go ahead and run the same size ground and ground it at the battery or ground it at the alternator. You know, do the big three upgrades so that you've got a good solid power source up front between your uh, engine, your uh, alternator, your battery, and your chassis. So running uh, your own ground wire is not uncommon. Matter of fact, in boats, Corvettes, anything with fiberglass, you have to do that because there's no real chassis to ground to. So this simulates doing that, running 20 foot of power wire back and then 20 foot of ground wire back because you gotta get back to the battery so the same gauge. So the first test we're gonna do is on the Kicker 4 gauge. And so we got the amplifier here set up. It's through an Anderson connector. We have plenty of current. We have a tone generator right here, and this generator is gonna create a 50 hertz sine wave, the same frequency we're using out in that portable display you saw over in the studio. This is just a, more of a lab grade version sitting here on the top, but this is a 50 hertz tone generator. We're sending that signal down into the amplifier, and then we are reading, and this I gotta give a shout out to our good friend Steve Mead out at SMD, Steve Mead Designs. Uh, I reached out to him and said, hey man, I need to get a meter from you. Uh, we got some testing we wanna do coming up and some other in the future, and Steve Steve worked with us and basically he just sent us the meter to use. So I'm gonna give a big shout out to Steve Mead, man. Thank you uh, for getting us this tool to use in the Unmasked Live Studios. We're gonna be using this tool a lot in the future and we can't thank you enough for working with us on this. So thank you, Steve, I have to say that. So there's my shameless plug for Steve, he's a great guy. So what we got is this amp hooked up to the four gauge. 
We have an SMD uh, AMM1 amp dyno meter, and it's going to measure what's the power coming out of this amplifier. Well, what's the amplifier driving? Well, over here underneath this test bench, we've got great big silver 1,000-watt dummy loads, and that's what these plugs right here on the bench are for, these red plugs. I'm actually plugged into the dummy loads that are underneath the bench here, and so these come up and they plug into the amplifier. I will say this. We did several runs of this this afternoon so that we could test everything. What we're about to do is the absolute hardest test you can put an amplifier under, any amplifier, it doesn't matter. We are running a continuous sine wave with no duty cycle, it's on. We're running the amplifier to full output clipping. We are doing it into a fixed two ohm resistive load bank. We didn't smoke an amplifier, but it's entirely possible that on Mass Live tonight, you may see us smoke an amplifier. And if we do, we've got a backup sitting here, and then if we smoke it, we'll get them both fixed tomorrow because we know people back in repair. But this test we're about to do is the hardest test you can put any amplifier through. A speaker load uh, is a reactive load that the impedance is constantly changing, and actually the impedance rises on the speaker. So even if you wire it to two ohms, it's not playing at two ohms all the time. It's actually playing up and down, and that impedance is moving based on frequency. Okay, This is a fixed resistive load. This is the hardest test on an amplifier. So we're letting you know up front that if we smoke an amp, we know it's entirely possible because this test is hard. We also know we design our amps to pass this test, so we feel pretty confident we're not going to have a problem, but just in case, we're ready. So I'm going to go ahead and fire up the meter here. And if you got anything to add, Rob, please feel free to chime in. Oh, I, I can just confirm that this is a very hard test. This is the test that me and Derek both run. And the 1 kilohertz is much easier. 40, 50 hertz, that is absolute torture on a sine wave, on a pure resistive load. It's a, it's murder on your amp, and that's why you often see uh, Derek running dual one op power runs to it to just kind of alleviate that. Uh, and, you know, running a four gauge power wires at 20 foot on the power and ground is it's a bit sketchy. It is very sketchy. I'll, I'll confirm that. It is. It is a bit sketchy. So what we're going to do here, I'm starting with the amplifier gain turned all the way down, and I'm going to go ahead and turn on my uh, signal. So now I've got a 50 hertz signal being fed into my amplifier. I'm going to fire the amplifier up. Let it come on. There's the light. That tells me I've got signal. We're good to go. And then I'm going to rely on my, my boy Timmy here, and I can see he's got a good picture on that. So I'm going to bring the amplifier up to clipping. So I'm just going to bring the gain up. Yeah, give it the beans. I'm going I'm to pour the gravy <laughs> on hard. So... I'm going to keep going here. I'm going to take it just a little bit. I'm at 1%. I'm going to take it a little bit higher than 1%. We're bright. should be right about 1%. So right there, you can see, I don't want to get in the way of the scope, but you can see we're putting in at about, about 2385 to 2442. It's fluctuating in between the high 2300s to mid 2400s, and we are into a 2-ohm load. That's what you can see on that SMD amp dyno. And the voltage over here... You can see we're at 13.15, 13 point. It's fluctuating just about 13.1 to 13.15 voltage. Uh, and we are starting with uh, right about 14 coming out of the power supply. So through that 40 foot run, because it's power and ground, you can see we're getting about a volt drop, but our amplifier is still producing well over 2400 watts. It's definitely making rated power. And the wire itself, it's getting warm. But it's not, now understand, this is a stress test for four gauge on this big of an amplifier. This is absolutely a stress test. And I, uh, this the is a very, right the, the amp's very Go efficient. I, I know this amp's very efficient, but I'm sure you're still pulling over 200 amps here. Oh, easily. yeah, easily. Uh, the, the wire right now, I'm reading on the positive wire with my meter, I'm up to 95 and a half degrees. It's fluctuating between 94 and 95. There's a 96, 97. There's 99. It's now getting up to 103. Let me touch it. Yeah, the wire is getting warm. And I'd expect the wire to get warm because I am pulling way more current over this four gauge wire than is recommended. I mean, we are way beyond spec as far as what we should be doing here. But what I wanted to show is the amplifier staying on. We've been running it. It's still putting out 2,500 watts. It's at 2,500 watts now, 2,476, 2,500. Uh, the voltage is dropping. So now you're seeing our semi-regulated power supply kick in and it's maintaining power. And we're seeing 12.68 volts now uh, coming from the bank over there. And that is because we are starting to heat this wire up and we're starting to see some loss through the wire. Uh, right now I'm up to 116, 117, 118. Take another reading up here. There's 119. 
So the wire is getting warm. I mean, it's definitely warm to the touch, but four gauge is running this kicker amplifier to full 2,500 watt output. Now I'm gonna go ahead and turn the gain back down. And hopefully everyone was able to see that on camera. What I'm gonna do at this point, I'm gonna shut the amplifier off. And what we're gonna do, and we're gonna do it live here on camera so you get to see the monkeys in the football having fun here. But we're gonna disconnect the power and ground wire from the amplifier. We're gonna unplug this Anderson connector. And then we're gonna plug in an Anderson connector that has 20 feet of power and 20 feet of ground with four gauge CCA. And we're gonna do the exact same test and let you see what happens there. Okay, so I'm gonna fire the amplifier back up. Timmy's over on camera, so hopefully he's getting everything into the picture he needs to get. I'm just here to tell you what's going on. <laughs> fire, fire, fire. <laughs> um, so you can see we got 14.4 volts starting out, uh, and that's at the amplifier here. That's what this meter is uh, reading, is what's the voltage at the amplifier. I've got my test tone on, 50 hertz. We're now going through the same scenario, 20 feet of power, 20 feet of ground, except this is CCA. So here we go, I'm gonna start cranking it up. And the amplifier just turned off. And I'm gonna turn it back down. And well this is this is what's cool, but I'm gonna try I gotta I gotta run the gain knob up slowly. So what's happening is the CCA wire. Is it taken to low voltage protection? Exactly. It's and so what's happening, if you can see on the meter, we're all we're we're only at fourteen hundred watts of output. So we're a thousand we're eleven hundred watts less than the previous wire, which was the solid copper, and I've already dropped the 13.6 volt, and I'm gonna just keep tweaking the knob up a little bit, try to get a little bit more out of here. There's 1700, there's 1800, we're down to 13.1 volts, I'm gonna keep tweaking up a little bit more, there's 1800 watts, eight, dude, 1900 watts, voltage sag, sagged so low that the amplifier went into low voltage protection mode. So I'm gonna turn the, the gain back down just a little bit so it'll come on and stay on. So there's 1240 watts. So what you're seeing here is the same gauge wire, simply four gauge copper versus four gauge CCA. I can't even get the kicker amplifier to full rated output over CCA. So what are you seeing happen here? Again, as I said in the beginning of the test, we are stressing the wire. Four gauge wire is not designed to run this big of an amplifier, but this is what allows us to show you the limitations of CCA versus 100% copper. And what you're seeing is uh, on the 100% copper, we were able to make 2,500 watts, no problem. Here, I'm, I'm idling at 1310 and it's staying on. The most I was able to get it to this afternoon was 1800 before it would shut off because as the amplifier is trying to make more than 1800 watts, it can't because it cannot get the voltage and current it wants through that wire. It's, it's just not capable. So I've, I've got, it's 1966, it peaked there a little bit. I'm gonna turn it back down just a little bit more. Well, Andy had a good comment. Down? He said, this is a great video for the people that ask, why does it my amp keep shutting off when the bass hits? This is why. Bingo. And, you know, I got to tell you, and thanks, Andy, for saying that. Guys, I can't tell you how many times our techs and customer service or our amp repair guys in the back, when we trace down the problem to what the customer is experiencing, Nine times out of 10, it's wiring or connections. Poor connections, like you said, Robert, and I can't stress that enough. I know you and I have both seen how many melted fuse holders and melted terminals because they weren't crimped properly, they weren't tight, and those loose connections or bad connections cause lots of heat, lots of melting, and, and current starve the amplifier, which causes the electronics to go bad prematurely. And also, from a guy called up, man, my amp, every time the bass hit, my amp shut off. Or, or at night, every time my amp hits, the bass, shut, bass shuts off, but during the day, it plays okay well at night you got your headlights on and you might have your defroster on and all these other things drawing power in your car there's not enough voltage and current after the loss through undersized wire or cca wire for the amplifier to live and so to give you an idea we've been here about the same amount of time as we were before and that's what i want to do we're up to 122 degrees 122 there takes take a few more measurements other places on the cable There's 99, 105. And that's roughly 700 watts less power at this point, six, Correct. 700, yeah. Correct, and, and the key, I mean, that wire is hot. I mean, I, I wish that we had 4D and you could actually feel the wires I'm touching it through the screen. This wire, 
is smoking hot. I mean, it's, it, if I was to keep this running, uh, I actually believe that we would reach, reach a position where the insulation would start getting gummy. We're at 100, and, man, I wish you, I don't know if you can catch that on camera, we're at 132 degrees on that jacket, 132. Oh, yeah. 132.5, 134, 135, and it's climbing, 136. So I'm going to head and I'm going to stop this because that's getting way too hot. <laughs> but as you can see, the amplifier is still trying to make power. I mean, it's sitting there making 1,600, 1,700 watts, and, and that's as much as I can get out of that four gauge CCA wire. So let's just call that, let's just call it 1,600 watts to be safe. So 1,600 watts is all the power I can get out of four gauge CCA. And doing that, the wire is smoking, smoking hot. So could I use four gauge CCA for an installation? Sure, you can, you can do it all day long. But what would be the safest amplifier to use this four gauge CC on? Honestly, probably about an 800 watt amplifier and that's probably about it and that's probably stretching it. Depends on how long you're gonna play that system before that outer jacket's gonna get taut to the point that it's dangerous. And so, yes, again, I gotta stress, no, we do not recommend four gauge wire on a KXA 2400, but this is how we were able to do an extreme stress test and show you the limitations of four gauge CCA versus four gauge copper. We actually have one more test lined up. Um, um, we'll push it, yeah, we're gonna push it to another show. But we've actually got a demo here where we can do the same thing with one aught wire. And we will do that on another show, we'll bring you back. But the key to this is we did listen to what you guys were saying in the comment feeds on our show and on our social media. You've seen the display over there with eight gauge and, and it was a lot of comments. Ah, that's eight gauge, that's not real wire, that's not big, nobody uses eight gauge, which isn't true because we sell a ton of eight gauge. People use eight gauge, but what you wanted to know is, well, that difference I'm seeing or that handicap, it won't exist if I go to bigger CCA wire. And I hope what this shows you, and we'll do it on a future show, we'll bring in the one odd into the equation, let you see that is, the problem is there, it's just the amount of current does increase. How much current can I pull through eight gauge CCA versus four gauge CCA? Can I pull more? Absolutely. But the proportional difference, eight gauge copper versus four gauge copper, smokes it. This amplifier was able to make full power on four gauge copper and couldn't even eke out 1600 watts or more over the CCA and the wire got dangerously hot. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this demo. We love putting it together for you. Please do yourself a favor. If you can't stretch out, if you, even if you bought a kicker amp, you go, man, I, I love the kicker wire kit, but I just can't, I can't swing it, but I, I've got to get my amp hooked up and working. Go find yourself 100% copper from wherever you need to find it. And don't cheat yourself by getting CCA and don't cheat the performance of your amplifier. Don't cheat your wallet. And more importantly, don't put yourself in a position where you can literally be in a fire hazard because what I'm telling you is not fear, it's reality, is you can cause a fire if you pull too much current through that wire, any wire. If you exceed its current capacity, will get hot. You melt that insulation, you're gonna be in a fire situation. So, so that's the best way I can wrap it up. I don't want this to sound like an info mosher for selling you kicker wire. This is information so that you know how to get the best safe performance out of your products.